many people think they can change the world? <laughs> they can change the world. Everybody's hands should have went up when I asked that question. Because in this lifetime, you don't get in this lifetime what you want. You get in this lifetime what you are. I'll say that again. You don't get in this lifetime what you want. You get in this lifetime what you are. So with that being said, the only way to change the world is to first change yourself. The only way to change the world is to first change yourself. And the way to change yourself is to change the way you think. My favorite book, one of my favorite books, I had a lot, I'm, a, I'm a reader, I like to read. Leaders are readers, I believe. And one of my favorite books is the Bible. And in the Bible, in Romans 12, 2, Romans 12, 2 says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. That means change your, change your mind, change your thoughts, change who you are. Because, as the book also says, we become, as a man thinketh in his heart, so shall he become. What we think about most of the time is what we'll get. Mr. Kitchen asked a great question when he started this, this session off up here this afternoon. He said, what was your most important thought over the last 24 hours? What was your most important thought? What was that one burning thought? Now make, make no mistake about it, in the course of the day, the average mind it thinks anywhere from 30 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 30 to 70,000 thoughts every day. Now, I believe probably about 60,000 are probably miscellaneous thoughts. What you did yesterday, what you might do tomorrow. Did you lock your door? Did you forget your key? What the, what the boys back home on the block doing? All these miscellaneous thoughts that's not going to make you who you are. All these miscellaneous thoughts. But see, when you start to direct your thoughts in the direction that you want to head in life, that's when your life will start to change. When you, when you left the block and went back home, you said things were different, right? Yeah, so well, things know. weren't different. You were different. Things weren't different on the block. You were different. Make no mistake about it. You changed. The block didn't change. The block's always going to be the block. But when you start to change and start to go around those same friends again, and they start to see you different because you're not thinking on the same path that they're thinking on. You see what I'm saying? So in life, you got to think about it like this. It's always a plus. And plus, look at the acronym PLUS, P-L-U-S. People like us. People like us. We like to hang around with people like us. People who think like we do. People who act like we do. As long as we're around, as long as we surround ourselves with people who think like us, life is great. Life is great, but when you start to step outside of that box, start to go for people who are a little more advanced in life, who know what they want, and start following the path of success, and you still go back and look at those people who are not on the fast track to success. They're on the fast track to nowhere. Because those 50 or 30 to 70,000 thoughts a day are thoughts about, man, I gotta get this money. Man, how about this woman over here? This, this girl over here, man, everybody knock this girl off. I got to get it all myself. You know, different miscellaneous thoughts that's going to lead to nowhere. But you got to know what you want. You got to think about what you want. And that thought got to be the, the, the predominant thought every day. You have to think about that thought and think about that thought. You have to make yourself think about that thought. And the more you think about a thought, it becomes a belief. Now, it may sound fancy, but a belief is no more than a thought that we continue to have over and over and over again. We can fool our minds to believe and think anything that we want. But you got to make yourself think it. You have to, you have to say, I'm conscious. I'm going to consciously think about this thought. And I'm going to continue to go on this path. Because the minute when you stop thinking about what you want to do and just let those random thoughts come in, your life will end up anywhere. Like, like you put that boat in the middle of the ocean and it kind of just floats anywhere. You know, you're going to go come through some storms, going to come through some winds, it's going to just blow you in a different direction. But if you already have in your mind where you want to go, what you want to achieve in life, that's all. We're already ahead of the game. Because if you ask the average person what do they want to do in their life, they couldn't tell you. If you ask the average person 
What is your average thought? What's your predominant thought? They couldn't tell you. Or if it's not, or if they, or if they can tell you, it's usually not something that's relevant anyway. See, this life, you gotta be successful on purpose. It's never an accident to be successful. You have to set out to be successful, and then that's what you become. Again, it goes back to the saying, you become what you think about most of the time. There was a doctor, he won the Nobel Peace Prize, named Albert, Albert Schweitzer. They asked Albert Schweitzer, what do you think is wrong with our society today? And Albert Schweitzer said that people just don't think. People just don't think. How many people have ever heard, we want to use 10% of our mind? We want to use 10% of our mind. OK. That's true, but in the end, it's not true. Because have you ever seen someone who's in a state where they really can't use their mind? Like a, maybe like a Michael J. Fox with the shape. And, you know, you can't really can't control your mind. When you're in a position where you can control your mind, you have to do it. You have to do it. And the progression of it goes like this. A thought, everything <coughs> happens with it. Everyone, everything begins with a thought. Everything in life begins with a thought. Once you get that thought, that begins to be the words that you speak, the words of encouragement to yourself, the words of encouragement to other people. And then you get into what, what's called actions. You can't have a thought without an action, or you can, but that thought will never go past the borders of the mind. If, a, if you think a thought, it could be a real good idea. How many people ever thought about something, and then maybe later on somebody had came up with an invention as an inventor or somebody who came up with the same idea that you had? Anybody up there? Somebody else thinks of the same idea. See, all these ideas are for the taking. All these ideas, those random ideas, those random thoughts, you have to pick the ones that you want. You have to pick the thoughts that you want. Once the actions start becoming natural, they become a habit. Thoughts go from words to actions to habits. Once you start getting those habits, you begin to do things that you don't even realize you do. You ever play cards with somebody that if they have a good hand, you can, you can tell they got a good hand because they're excited, or they may scratch their chin when they got an ace, or the joker, they may rub their hands. <laughs> they, may, they, they may do things like that out of habit. They don't even realize they do it. They did it so much that it becomes a habit. And when, when, when you start dealing with success, you start getting those successful thoughts. Learn how to be successful thinker. You have to learn how to be a successful thinker. Not just survive. See, we all know how to survive. Everybody knows how to survive. You survive the best way you can, the best way you know how. But success is different from survival. Survival, you do things because you've got to do them like that. Success is on purpose. It's because you got a destiny in, inside of you. You got a destiny that's bigger than yourself. <coughs> that you got to get that out. And see, when the progression continues, the, the habits become your character, who you are. How do people see you? How do you see yourself? And then the character leads to destiny. So it goes from thought to words to actions to uh, habits to character to destiny. All by the thoughts. All by the thoughts. Anybody know a boxer by the name of George Foreman? George Foreman, he's one of my favorite boxers other than Ali. But y'all know, know where Foreman started? Job Corps. Job Corps. He started, he started in Job Corps. Now he was, he was used originally from Houston. Now he went from Houston, Texas to Job Corps in Oklahoma. A guy from, a guy from Houston, Texas, now I don't know if you can picture that, but a guy from Houston, Texas going to Oklahoma. He was just, he was, he was even more lost when he got to Oklahoma because he was the only one just coming, or not too many just coming. So he had some obstacles he had to go through. He went from Oklahoma to California. He went to his best training in, in California, and he met with a guy named Doc. And Doc began to, he took a liking to George Foreman. And see, George Foreman, he was the bully. He was a bully, he was a job for a bully. He could knock everybody out. Sometimes he knocked people out just for looking at him funny. But for just for no reason, he was a bruiser. He was a bruiser. That's all he knew, that's all he knew all his life, how to get by with these, how to fight. That's all he 
never knew how to fight. So that, that guy, Doc, took him in the ring. And even though George was a big boy, big bruiser, he put him in the ring with a skinny guy, a tall, scrawny guy. And see, George Foreman knew how to fight, but he didn't know how to box. He knew how to fight, but he didn't know how to box. And because he didn't know how to box, he got in that ring with a guy that was much smaller than him and lost. Because in his mind, he knew he could take him. But the guy was just too fast. George threw his heavy blows, and if he would have hit him, he definitely would have knocked him out. But because the skinny guy knew how to bob and weave, because he knew how to bob and weave, he was able to get away from George's heavy punches. And see, that guy, Doc, that took a liking to George for me and said, you know what? If you're going to learn how to, if you want to box, you got to learn how to box and not just fight. And I'm telling you guys today, if you want to be successful, you have to learn how to be successful and not just how to survive. You have to learn how to be successful and not just know how to survive. So successful means being around people like us, people who begin to think like you think. You have to begin to stretch yourself. You have to begin to look at your circle. You have to always be able to examine your circle. There's a quote that I love that says, the unexamined life is not worth living. That means if you don't have time to look at your life, to see where you come, to see why you are where you are, it's, un it's not worth living. But if you, if you go back and take the time to examine step by step, even if you've already gone through it a thousand times in your mind, go through it again a thousand times again. 